YouTube, listen. I have made quite some adjustments to the reactor here. Primarily, the two primary things I've done is I have added another condenser as well as I have increased the holding tank of the reactor so that way we can hold more of the oils in there. Let me show you. So, as you can see here, this is the new holding tank right here. Wait, hold up. It's hard to get it in the shot for some reason. Except my camera. Can I switch my camera around? Matter of fact. Let's see if I can do that. If I can switch my camera around, it'll make it a lot easier. Here we are. Look. Alright, so yes. This is the new holding tank. I used to use this fire extinguisher here, but I need a larger capacity. Because we're going to be making more oil at one time, right? The next thing I've done is I have added another Liebig condenser in this system because what was happening was uh, these pipes after the con this first condenser were still getting hot and some oils were being caught even in the filtering system so you know we we're starting to lose some valuable oil yields hold up let me see where is this chat live chat it's this thing in front of the camera I can't see hold up give me a second I saw I saw a message said where am I in the world? I'm in um Georgia, USA. Let me see if I could pull up the messages again, yeah? Here we are. What's up, Harry Shepherd? I see you commenting on a lot of my videos, mate. Good to see you here. Good to see ya. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, yeah. I assume you're doing well. I'm definitely doing well. Good to see you again, Salvation State. Yeah, I recognize you as well. You've been in a couple of my live streams before. The OGs. So, you know, here's the thing, guys. Listen. I was planning on doing the biggest run that I've done yet. All right? This reactor right now, is it's on. It's filled up to the brim with plastic. But guess what? I went to turn it on. One of the magnetrons died. What can you do, mate? I mean, I've been spending all day today shredding up plastic because, like, I, I wanted to get up to 20 pounds or what is that, about, like, 8 or 9 kilos of plastic. That's a lot of plastic. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're actually having to shred that much plastic, it's a lot. I actually broke uh, the shaft of my plastic shredder doing it because um, I was... One of the screws on it got loosened, so they, like, popped up when it was shredding, and then the torque, like, just formed the metal on it. Yeah, it was crazy. Let me see. Let me see. You said, man, great job. I've been looking into gasoline extraction lately. Do you have schematics to see the full system? We don't have schematics yet. You say, be careful with styrene as it can form benzene during pyrolysis. You know what, Trinity Organics? I've, of course, I don't have the tools to know, but um, I've read many research papers. Um, and they say most of the time, microwave pyrolysis actually does not form that many styrenes if you when you um, put styrofoam in there. But of course, it is a risk. Um, fortunately, I do have filters. Fortunately, um, I do burn off the gas as well. And when I'm burning off the gas, I'm not around the area, you know what I'm saying? Like when I'm like, you're using the gas to run the distiller and all that. So I'm not really at any risk because there's no leaks in this reactor. Uh, there's no, oh, what's up, uh, Cleberson Silva? You, is that Portuguese? You say you're from are you saying you're from Brazil I don't speak Portuguese to be honest with you though I do listen to a lot of Portuguese music so well hola hola sir good to see you you're saying something about Africa you were gonna do pyrolysis for the international science here but your mother made you do it with wind turbines because she thought the fumes would leak and poison me or something. Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, in my experience, because I've had many leaks with the reactors, they're not, like, going to kill you immediately, right? But, of course, you don't want to be breathing them in every day. 
personally. Um, but at the same time, um, it's not like it's like the fumes from this, right? Especially if you're not putting in halogenated plastics. It's not like 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 chlorine gas or, or like mustard gas, right? Stuff that like kill you immediately. This is the type of stuff that like will slowly get you. You know, with like attrition. What is your area of training? Um, welding, I guess. That's really the only area I've been like actually trained in. You know, metalwork, welding, all that type of stuff. I don't have any type of background in chemical engineering or electrical engineering. I just learned all that on my own, right? But yeah, as I was saying, it was quite bad luck that one of the magnetrons died. So right now this is running with just two magnetrons. So it's not really the most scientific test. But it is interesting to see um, two magnetrons does work. Of course, it doesn't work as quickly, as efficiently, as hot, but it does work nonetheless. Um, yeah, going into electrical engineering is definitely good. Did you find the electro electronic waste pyrolysis gas smelt different? Not really. I mean, I have the filters, like I say. So the filters really catch most of the crap and all this stuff anyway. Like, when it comes out after all the filters, it just kind of smells like like gasoline almost like the actual vapor gas products just smells kind of like that gasoline like i don't know how to describe it but yeah like it, it no matter what i put in the reactor the gas product almost always smells the same because i really filter out most of the you know sulfurs and all the heavier stuff i already lived in south africa and produced fuel with garbage and several other materials congratulations on your project i like your project thank you cleverson silva that is amazing that you've been doing this as well. I love to see everybody doing it. I hope that this microwave pyrolysis could be adopted more uh, because of the efficiencies of it. What's up, Mr. Carbon Master? I remember you from the last live stream. Oh, South Africa, yes. So you're in South Africa, Salvation State. Yeah, I do do a lot of reading, Harry Shepard. In fact, that's like most of what this reactor was built off of. Me reading research papers. So that's why I'm not really worried about the fumes, you know. I've, I've read those research papers. I know, for the most part, what is in the pyrolysis gas most of the time. And my filters that I put on here, you know, get most of the stuff that you don't really want out. Um, so that's really all it is. I'm basing my science off of science that actual scientists have done because you know i'm not an actual scientist have you tried bleeding and refrigerant gas into the reactor for disposal so you're talking about pyrolysis of the refrigerant gas i've never tried that i never thought about that i mean i always thought if i put any type of gas in there it's just gonna go through all the plumbing before it ever gets broken down i'd have to like close the the valve and then let it just build up in there build up heat I, I don't know. I'll work with energy because I want to fix this country's load shedding crisis. What is load shedding? Yeah, I never really even thought about that. Like, refrigerant can be broken down. Like, what is refrigerant? Is it like a hydrocarbon? Is it like, you know what I'm saying? What exactly is it? I never really thought about that. I guess I guess everything really can be broken down some way. Like, is it is it organic? You know? It's propane treated with fluorine. Oh, so it can absolutely be broken down then. Yeah. You know, that reminds me. Because at a larger scale, we definitely want multiple different reactors. You know, there's this type of reactor here, which is a low pressure, atmospheric pressure reactor that um, is, it can be made continuous, but there also could be reactors that are high pressure batch reactors, right? Where there is no outlet port. You put the plastic in, you completely seal the thing all around, and all those vapors build up pressure in there, almost like hydrothermal de uh, decarbon, no, hydrothermal carbonization. And I feel like in that type of reactor, that would be the best for breaking down things like vapors because if i put vapors in here they're just going to go up the, the the column like everything else before they ever get broken down it's only the physical stuff like oils and plastics that get broken down load shedding is when they shut off your power into 
within two or four long cycles because the grid can't supply. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that before, yeah. I just never heard of it. I never knew what the name of it was, yeah. Right, it just comes down to the energy and the fact that, you know, a lot of energy that we get nowadays is, is sourced from other places when clearly we can produce energy from our trash. I mean, here's the thing, guys, listen. I did the math. We saw, even with my math being wrong, we are definitely producing more energy than we put out, than we put in for this process, right? So at a larger scale, you know, the larger things get, the more efficient they get. And on top of that, there's so many improvements that could be made to this as well. But let's say this is the best it could be, industrial, all that. It's, a, it's literally a generator, an energy generator, right? Like a, a power plant, pretty much, that takes trash, turns it into fuel and all that. That will solve, that's a solve to the energy crisis because... That's, that's power, that's electricity right there, you know? Well, it's not direct electricity, it's more heat. You know, I feel like it's a lot more efficient to just use the heat from the products than to convert the heat of them into electricity, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, like, that, it can work that way, too. Because, I mean, if it's true that right now we're getting 200% efficiency, right? Let's say we get up to 400% efficiency. That will be able to account for the losses of converting this thermal energy into electrical energy. So then it'll be like, okay... We're getting double the electrical energy, purely electrical energy, out of this process. And that's after the conversion with a, uh, a generator or a turbine. We lived in South Africa for four years and made a car powered by 100% hydrogen and biofuels and made of organic materials. That's, that's quite cool, mate. So you clearly have the mind for this type of stuff. You know, I'm like saying this right here, right? Think about it. There is so much food waste in America. All that food waste is methane, natural gas. We have buses that run off of natural gas. We have forklifts that run off of natural gas. We have cars that run off of natural gas. So why are we over here saying that we have an issue? We're running out of um, we're running out of fossil fuels, or we're running out of whatever to put in cars or whatever, or we can't find renewable sources of combustible fuel when we have all of this food waste. That could be put into a biodigester to make biogas. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. It's like, what the heck? Sometimes I really wonder if it's almost on purpose that we're in a so-called energy crisis. Because to me, and anybody else that has any type of innovative minds, you can easily see that there is energy everywhere. I mean, I had a video. I turned grass clippings, put them in uh, my old reactor, turned it into freaking like natural gas, right? Grass clippings. You know? My dude. And with plastic or other energy dense things that are put in here in a large batch, you're getting more energy out than you put in. Then at that point, it's like, what? Why? Why is it even a thing to say that we are in a crisis of energy? I don't know why in America, where I am. There's not these type of plants everywhere, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why, because if I can build this in my backyard, that should be the proof. There, there is, this is no sophisticated, special little fusion reactor technology. This is literally microwaves put on a pressure vessel, but not even a pressure vessel, because there's no pressure in there. Just microwaves put on a freaking piece of metal that has tubes coming out of it. Like, basically... My, a microwave heated oil refinery, pretty much. It's not much more complicated than that. What's up, insightful app? Is that Ali or is it insightful A? But how, I'm doing great, man. Glad to see you here. And, and see you as well, Antonio or Antiano. Antiano. 1,000 kilograms of waste plastic consumes 100 or contains 160, 176 kilograms of hydrogen. Yeah, plastic is so energy dense. I mean, and that's how, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, it makes sense. Like, some people will be skeptical, like, breaking the law of thermodynamics. How can you get more energy out than you're putting in? But it's because plastic is so energy dense. And this pyrolysis process, after a certain point, actually becomes exothermic. The most energy is getting it up to heat, okay? Because plastic is an insulator, uh, and on top of that, 
it has a lot of it, it requires a lot of energy to crack right but once you get it all up to heat all of that heat in there will continue to break it down even when you're not applying as much energy so the energy requirement to crack the plastic goes down the hotter the plastic is but you're still getting the same amount of energy out of the plastic despite that right especially with microwaves because the hotter it gets the more microwaves it absorbs right you see what i'm saying so that's how we get more energy out than we put in because think about it like this this reactor gets up to 800 degrees i turn off all the microwaves it's still at 800 degrees for like a couple hours you know and when it's still at 800 that plastic is still being turned into fuel you know it's kind of like how we pump for for crude oil right that takes energy to pump for it, but obviously we're getting more energy out than we're putting in when we pump it because it's so energy dense, right? So it's like the same, it's the same concept, yeah? There's a theory that the managers purposely damage the equipment so they get money to fix it and keep it for themselves. And there's a lot of shady stuff going on in this world, I won't lie. You think at an industrial scale, work to drop to drop in to a high density microwave area and instantly convert it. To drop. So you're saying like, it's continuous. We drop in a bag of plastic, have microwaves bombarding it everywhere at the perfect frequency. Absolutely. I mean, let me tell you guys, like I said, I shredded up like, I tried, I wanted to shred up nine kg of plastic. I ended up shredding up only seven kg, but that was so much plastic. Like I have stockpiles of plastic saved up over the years. And I went through like half of all of my stockpiles just to get 7 kgs of the stuff because it does not take that much plastic to make that much weight. So I believe, no, no, rather, I know that at a big scale, not even at a huge scale, but just at a decent scale, multiple of these in every city, plastic problems done. Done. And I'm doing this with a batch. This is not continuous. At a, you know, even at just a batch scale alone, the, the amount that this reactor takes right like you take such a large amount of plastic and turn it over such a little amount of time relative to you know especially relative to how long plastic takes to biodegrade the plastic problem is done you know and i i noticed that after i did the e-waste right because I, like i said i used to watch documentaries for years talking about how um oh man e-waste is one of the biggest problems in the world they're burning it in um, many countries in africa because you know, they, they want to recover the metals, right? It's a huge issue. I put it in my reactor. Not only did I get liquid oil out and I got the gas product out, but I got all the metals out. When I saw that, that's when it clicked in my head like, the problem solved. I'm not saying I solved it because I, all I did was just put together research papers and put together things that have, have just come to me. But all I'm saying is this problem that we have, so-called pollution, so-called energy crisis it's solved it's done it's all it all it is is a matter of just putting the blocks into place that's all it is it's like putting the lego blocks on the plate but all the lego blocks are there you just gotta you gotta put it together now right you say hide from the government <laughs> the airplane industry will love this absolutely absolutely i mean how are we gonna get battery powered airplanes we're not there was an airplane that ran off of um Cooking oil from Chick-fil-A, I think. Why do that when I literally am making kerosene right here? Jet fuel right here out of plastic. You need help constructing an engine that will run off of water? Uh, honestly, I am not somebody with the engine stuff, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm understanding engines more and more every day, especially when I get to a point where I'm going to run this off of a generator. But until then, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really more focused on hydrocarbons more of the fuels for the engine rather than the engine. How much wealth do you think you will gain from this patent? <laughs> well, I honestly, don't, I can't tell you. I mean, my goal is not wealth. My goal is to solve the issues of the world. Problem, solution. You know what I'm saying? Of course, wealth comes along with it. But at the end of the day, in order to be rich and rich and rich, you eventually get to a point where you have to exploit people. I'm not here to exploit anybody. We've had enough of that done with these big oil companies. I'm here to solve the freaking issues of the world. That's simple. I, I care less about wealth, mate. You know what I'm saying? End of the day, you, if you solve issues in the world, 
You're gonna live forever. You're gonna be in the books. It's that simple. I mean, because you have wealth now. It's temporary. When you're dead, it's gone. But if you're if you're known in the books for what you've done, you're you're living forever, right? It's not temporary anymore. They burn plastic off the cables to sell it in Nigerian dildos, right? And that's a huge issue because that's. Do you guys tell me? I, I see comments all the time saying I'm gonna die because I'm breathing in toxic fumes when they're literally burning this with oxygen. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people still think I'm burning plastic. A lot of people don't understand that when you take oxygen out, their products are completely different. It's a completely different chemical reaction, right? And um, like I said, with e-waste, since e-waste is mostly inorganic, you may not get more energy out than you get in, but you will certainly get more money out than you get in. That, wait, you certainly get more money out than you put in for electricity because not only are you not causing all that pollution crap, but, you you know, all those precious metals are like, you guys saw it, right? If you saw that video, the e-waste video, those precious metals are just right there, bro. They're so easy. I mean, if I was a chemist, like, now nah, I had the equipment, I would get the gold out of that. I know there's gold in there. I would get it. I know there's palladium and silver. I would get it. I just don't have all those tools. I'm not buying it. Screw it. I'd rather send it to somebody with the tools, right? He makes a patent. He has to make the plans, designs public. Yes. If I'm, when I patent one of these, it will be public. It will be. I promise you that much. It will be public. Because personally, I've seen too many times you get the patent, it's not public, either gets erased, everything, you get silenced, or you're done. You know, you get, you get knocked, right? I'm making it public. So that way, if anything happens to me, I mean, if anything happens to me, I'm sure at least one person that views my stuff will go out and make this. I mean, because you come, truthfully, guys, come on, it's quite simple, right? This is this was two propane tanks welded together, wave guides, magnetrons from home microwaves put on there, and then plumbing done. It it ain't that complex. It's just like the logistics around it, like the electronics stuff, like all of it together is complex. But individually, this is no sophisticated technology. You know, it's none. Give us the whole process in a video. You're right. I do need to do that. We are rich in the mind, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to be rich in person. I'm already, I'm already a trillionaire in the mind. That's all that matters. Because what is the difference between a trillionaire and a bum with a trillion dollars? There's a huge difference. That's all in the minds. Why do you think large companies haven't invested in this yet? That's a great question. And. <laughs> I mean, unless I'm going straight conspiracy mode, I really don't know. I don't know because I it's I read the research papers, I see the science, I see me, myself when I build it. We seen the math. You get more energy than you put it in, than you put in. I don't know why you're not building. You're solving pollution. No, this pyrolysis is classified as an environmentally friendly way of dealing with waste. It's classified as, I don't know why it's not done. I, it's, it's, it's like there's some type of agenda why it is. It's, like, it's almost like, too good to be true to close the loop. It does, like, this solves so many things. It, it goes beyond just trash. There's like a societal thing. Maybe that's why. It's like too powerful. We will rid Earth of all plastic. Exactly. We will. Because we're never. I don't know why people still are in delusion thinking... The, 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 the goal or the key to getting plastic out the ocean is to stop using it. Because we're never going to stop using plastic. Everything is plastic. It's so useful. Your, half your clothes are plastic, dude. What's my opinion on wind energy? I think wind energy is great. I would love to, at an industrial scale, have a huge reactor that runs off of wind energy. I would love to have that. I would love to. I think wind energy is great. I love it. Um, I love solar panels too. Um, I think that renewable energy is good, but I don't think renewable energy is the key because it's electricity and just electricity and always just electricity. There are huge benefits and applications where having liquid fuel or gaseous fuel that can be stored, that can be um, put into an engine. There are so many applications where that specifically is useful and necessary. Electricity and batteries are not always going to be it. We need another form. How much money could people get if they if they tie if they tired in a bag 
if we get this ball rolling. I mean, like, yeah, that's the goal. We do want it to be like a thing. Um, clearly, with the energy energy profit of this thing, it could be a thing where definitely like people are paid to bring in so much, so many pounds or kilos of plastic waste, right? That's great. Cause doing that, now we're so we're definitely solving the plastic problem. Now it's like remember back then, guys, we used to get paid to bring in aluminum cans or glass to recycle it. You know, like you wouldn't get paid much, but you would get paid. The amount of litter of glass and aluminum was so small compared to now. So when they stopped that, the litter went up like crazy. Because nobody has an incentive. We're gonna do that with plastic. At at this um at the place I work at, right? I work at a, as an assistant la welding instructor at a school. I set up a bin. It says put plastic in here only because I turn it into fuel. People really only put plastic in there because people respect it, right? You feel what I'm saying? So like when you have stuff set in place, you have you you know people feel like they can be a part of something. They're gonna respect it. So when we have this set up where it's like people can be play can get paid to bring in plastic waste, people are gonna be going out to the ocean, getting all that plastic and bringing it to the plants. You know what I'm saying? You think, you said, I, I don't, sushi rice, you say, um, you don't think they invest it because of pre-existing industries which make them money. This is what makes them as, as much money, I'm guessing. I, I, I would say that if there weren't these big companies investing in other stupid stuff. That makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Of course, right now, mining crude oil is cheaper, of course. But there, but these, these, these uh, petroleum companies are investing in other things, right, outside of that. So I don't know why they're not investing specific, specifically in this. I don't get it. You know? Yeah, I got to catch up on these, <laughs> these comments. I'm way behind. A huge reactor like this. Powered off renewables will be beautiful. That that is ultimately the goal, guys. I'm letting everybody know now. The ultimate goal is to run this reactor off of either solar or wind. Because I mean, at that point, I'm literally making money from it. Because we're getting not only is the electricity from those sources so cheap, but we're getting more out than we put in anyway. But like, if it's my own solar panels or my own wind, then like, like there is like really no energy input really. For the cost wise so like i mean it's crazy i mean i already have so much especially of the gas product they got a yoga ball back here filling up but you can see it <laughs> i already have so much other stuff it's crazy and i tell you like i don't know what that gas exactly is but it's good gas you know what i'm saying it burns really good really clean really energy dense it's not as dense as propane i know that much because you know when i compress a, a tank up to 100 psi it definitely doesn't have as much energy in it as a propane tank compressed to 100 psi but you know, regardless, it's some good stuff. This kid in my class put glass in the paper recycling bin. Yeah, but you see what I'm saying? Like, the, re the reason why he probably did that is because they don't have a glass bin, right? You feel me? So, people, like, there's a disconnect. People are like, what the heck do I do with this glass then, you know? So, what I'm saying is we're fixing that by doing things like this, bringing this at a larger scale. In fact, most schools don't even recycle. And even if the even if the schools had a recycle bin, I doubt any of that plastic in there would actually be recycled, especially the contaminated plastic. And that is my favorite thing about this reactor. When I was shredding up all those kilos of plastic, all those pounds of plastic, guess what? They were dirty. Some of them had oil. Some of them had food residue. Some of them had paper on the labels and crap, different types of plastic. It does not matter. It all goes in here. The mechanical recycling industry of plastic is worth like 10 billion dollars a year or something like that it's a huge amount of money so you guys are telling me that we're not going to make money from doing this right or like the the, the oil companies don't invest in this because it's not making money when the mechanical recycling which doesn't even work is worth billions say you are you bro you are so sexy <laughs> rohan my brother I think you should start your own company and look for investment from the green sector. Yeah, I mean, I, of course I want to start my own company, mate, but, you know, it, it takes time. There's a lot of stuff to do. You guys have to remember, right, on top of building this reactor, I got to make YouTube videos. On top of YouTube videos, I got to make other social media stuff, 
TikTok. And on top of all that, I gotta start filing all this patent crap, taking data, writing it all down. And on top of that, I gotta start a company too. It's a lot. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a while. Because I'm not in a position where I can hire a whole team of people to help me. I'm not in that position. No talk. So it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take longer. But you know what? You know what we say though. Good trees take time to grow good roots. Real talk. So I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, the time is definitely annoying. I, I don't, I'm not the most patient person. But, but I will be patient if it's worth it in the end. If I can build something where even if I, if I, if I get hit by the government or I, I, I die prematurely to lung cancer, it's going to go on no matter what because the roots are so strong. The foundation's so strong. It doesn't matter, right? You know what I'm saying? I'd rather wait for that. Because, you know, I, I had the benefit of starting young. I'm, I'm only 19, right? So I still got so many years to keep working on this. <laughs> Sanjay, what's going on, bud? <laughs> listen, listen, mates. You got to appreciate he has love. He has love for me. And that's, that's respectful. And you reached out to larger green companies to help you... With funding like solar researchers, I have not. I honestly don't even know where to start. You know, because sometimes it's kind of like um, like I, I, this is not really a finished product, right? So like to me, sometimes I'm just like, what do I even say? I should be in that mindset. Cause I'm kind of limiting myself because I'm sure somebody definitely would want to invest in me if they heard about this. Um, but yeah, I just, I just really, really want YouTube to work. Because if YouTube works, I'm getting a lot of views on YouTube, these companies will see me. Rather than me having to go out and look for them, I don't really have the mental energy or time after working on this for so long every day. And having to work a job every day. I don't really have the mental energy to be like, oh, let me think about what company I can reach out to. It'll be better if these companies just come to me because they see me on YouTube, right? You ain't never heard a tree grow. Don't forget that family. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I think this is more important than YouTube and TikTok, for sh but for sure, man. Once, once you get to a point where you could have a business plan, I have no doubt you could find an investment in a company. Yeah. Um, for sure. You know, it all goes hand in hand together. Think about it like this. Of course, a business is important, but think about it. If I wasn't doing YouTube or TikTok, you guys wouldn't know what I was doing. Real talk. Don't you guys want to be a part of the journey as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to perfect the system, then I have funding. I, I am definitely faithful in that because think about it. I was building Mark, what was it, Mark 3? Is it Mark 3? Or Mark, yeah, yeah. I was building Mark 3. I had a lot of investors talk to me in the time then because I had some big videos on TikTok during that time. But guess what happened to Mark 3? It blew up! <laughs> so if I had gone through with the investments then, I would have looked like a fool. I should have, I, I, so I, I made the wise decision to just wait. Let me get my foundation, my roots strong. And that's all I'm doing now. I'll take time. With preheating the reactor, improve the efficiency or at least the speed. Um, what's, since microwaves heat from the inside out, what's the point of preheating? Because if we preheat it, we're preheating the outside. I mean, like, what's the difference between preheating and just turning the microwaves on? You know? <laughs> Yo, what are you saying, Sanjay? Sanjay, he said, he's my boyfriend, mate. Why is my camera so foggy? What on earth? Hold up. What the f- Why is the camera so foggy? Yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get 10,000 subscribers. We're definitely going to be 10,000 subscribers. You said, I should invest in a better microphone and a camera so I can grow faster on YouTube. I do agree. Um, the, what is it? the camera I have is kind of trash. I mean, the camera, the quality of the image is good, um, but it's not that best of a camera. Um, personally, it's kind of a tough situation, right? I have a, I have a certain monthly budget, and it's like, I could I could buy a lot of recording equipment, but usually, you know what I like to do with my monthly budget? I usually like to put it into here, into the reactor, because it's like progressing the project. 
Like, I know, obviously, with my goals and ambitions with YouTube, it makes sense to be like, we'll get a better camera. But, but the truth of the matter is, it's all about the algorithm. Because I've seen people with horrible quality videos on YouTube doing what I do at a, a scale way less complex, million views. It's the algorithm. It's the algorithm, right? So I'm really more concerned about upgrading the quality of my stuff after the fact. Because I, I, I know I can get the high quality and not get the algorithm on my side and it won't mean anything. It'll just be money that could have gone into this. You know what I'm saying? You know what, I will be honest, the reason why my lens is corroding is because I was welding and then and several sparks hit the camera. Got absolutely de destroyed. It got gang banged by sparks. People are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. We need to take personal responsibility for ourselves. Don't send your trash to your others. Recycle it yourself. I agree. I agree with you. And I love being able to have all my trash in my house that I produce either composted or put in here. I have I put out no trash. You know what I'm saying? Maybe some of my other family members do, but me, it's either composted or put in here. All right here at my house. And when I get to the point where this reactor is producing enough, I'm not even gonna have to go to the gas station anymore. That reminds me, guys, I'm building a new distiller. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be way better. Um, the products will be way better out of it. Uh, I know I have, where is it? This is gasoline I made from plastic over, back in the summer, was that, three months ago. Um, and this is pretty good quality, as you can tell. It has a nice golden color. It's gonna get even better than that with this new distiller. It's gonna be done by next weekend, I assume. I've been collecting all of this oil we've been getting. So that way, when the distiller is done, I'll have a good quantity to put in there. And the goal will be, I want to get a diesel, a, a gallon of diesel from plastic out of this reactor for less than the price of a gallon of diesel from the pump. If I can do that at my backyard, this technology is done. You know what I'm saying? If I can, at this scale in my backyard, beat the price at the pump, it's a done deal. It's done. Can you set up an investment system? I have a GoFundMe, I guess, if you could say that one. But in terms of investment, like market investment, I'm not doing that because I don't like to be almost like where I feel like I have to do so. I don't know how to say it. I just don't want to do that right now. I don't want to say it. Man, Jab is going to be one of the people who's going to save this world. Trust me, guys. You're, you're damn right, Sanjay. You're damn right, brother. Well, I don't have toilet paper. I use tissue paper and put them in plastic. What the fuck? <laughs> what videos do you put on Patreon? Honestly, I need to do better with my Patreon. I haven't uploaded anything on Patreon in months. Um. <laughs> God damn it. I need to do better with it, real talk. I, I don't know. Because here's the mindset I'm in a lot of times. It's kind of like, I do, most of the times I make videos. My GoFundMe isn't on my description. It should be. Uh, most of the time when I make videos, I don't really have much cut content or cut footage other than, like, just stupid things that, like, make no sense, like, like a couple extra seconds of the plastic shredder running or, like, a couple extra seconds of me setting up the reactor. Like, it's nothing, like, worth posting on Patreon. And on, on top of that, I feel like most people that support me on Patreon support me because they, they believe in me and the project. They're not really supporting me because they want to see extra footage. I feel like most people on Patreon just want to just want me to upload videos, whether it is on Patreon or YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, I don't. I, I you know when I do things, I want to share it with the world. You know? All right, I'll upload. I'll um fix my descriptions later. Then thanks for letting me know, sushi rice. Do I have a scrapyard? Yeah, there's a scrapyard near me. I don't really use it to get metals, but I use a scrapyard to get all the microwaves, I, I get all the propane tanks, all of the electronic stuff. That's why I get from my um, my scrapyard, yeah? All that stuff. You should try to bring the reactor through airport security. I mean, like, real talk, though. 
it doesn't even look like a reactor, really. Like, when it's not, like, all hooked together. It just looks like a propane tank horizontal. You said, but can, but can go fund me return to the investor? What do you mean by can it return to an investor? So it looks like a bomb. <laughs> I guess it kind of does. I guess. That would be kind of funny though. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> Come rolling this thing in there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Their face would like... The faces. Come rolling a freaking big ass. It's like a SAR bomber, doesn't it? Like a nuclear weapon. A warhead. Well, yeah, I mean, that's all it is, guys. I'm just, you know, um, the truth of the matter is, I have to just remember to keep a balanced life. Sometimes I do get a little bit too caught up in the reactor. I get too caught up in the ambitions. I get too caught up thinking, like, this is the way that, um, I often forget to do, forget to actually live, you understand me? So I've been doing, I've been having a more balanced life as as of recent, trying to get into more things, you know what I'm saying, like, I need to start doing some more extra extracurricular activities, like I probably start you know, going to a little boxing club just to, you know, make sure I have my, my health up in, in, in uh, the best shape possible, you know, I, I feel like I definitely need to be extra healthy, considering I'm around carcinogenic compounds all the time, right, and on top of that, just have to be smart with it at the end of the day. You know, because I, I know I'll make it, but it's going to take time, and I don't know when. I would love to make it by the end of this year, so that way I don't have to return to my job next semester. Um, but, you know, if I don't, then, you know, um, I guess that's what it is, what it is, right? I'll, I'll work there again until I make it eventually, right? So I said that as I'm smoking. <laughs> I'm actually not smoking. It's just a cinnamon stick, mate. I like things on my mouth. Pause. <laughs> my mother didn't know aerosols were banned, so she started spraying all the deodorant on before the airport security took it. Oh, it's because they're flammable, isn't it? Should we all like email spam Mark Rober for you? You know what? That's one thing I do want to say, guys. Um, I don't understand why. Around the time when I was really blowing up on TikTok, why no other big YouTubers posted me or shouted me out? Because I know they saw my stuff. I know they did. I know they did for a fact. But why didn't they? Because that's all it would have taken to build me where I need to be. Mark Rober, Mr. Beast, any one of them, even a smaller YouTuber, less than a million subscribers, see my thing, repost me. Why didn't that happen? I don't know. But personally, I'm not going to stay in that mindset, because that's in the past, it's done now, I'm in the present, who cares, right? It all happens for a reason. Yeah, I like things in my mouth too, especially in Magnum Sock. Alright, that's enough of Sanj. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the truth of the matter is, I, you know, I really only smoke, um, celebratorily. I don't smoke for any other reason. Because personally, I need to keep my mind, my vision clear. And, um, you're under the influence of things. Your vision is not clear. And when my vision is not clear, I'm not able to see what's next for this. You feel me? You feel me? Like, this is a vision thing. This is visionary, guys. I saw Mark IV. I saw this design in my head back when Mark II was still a thing on YouTube. Like, when I'm showing everybody that on YouTube, I was already on this design in my head. And now that I'm on this design in my head, I'm already on Mark 6. I already know exactly what Mark 5 is going to be. I already built it in my head. I know exactly what Mark 5 is going to look like, how it's going to work. So I'm on Mark 6 right now. Because my mind is always clear. My, I see the visions, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Salvation State is confused about Sanjay. We're all gonna email spam these people. Hey man, I appreciate it. I always hear life is about who you know, networking. And personally, I'm not that good at networking. You know why? Because I'm I I have limited social energy. 
You know, after I have a long day of working on this reactor, I don't feel like talking to any any of these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. So I don't feel like talking to all these people for hours and hours. And if I do talk to people for hours and hours, then I, I, I'm so mentally drained. I don't have I don't have the energy to work on this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not that good at networking, and that's probably why I'm still in the state I'm in, personally. But you know, get better with time. I mean, I need to agitate this reactor. Give me a second. Yeah, I will, we will agitate this. I'll take you guys with me, matter of fact. I will take you with me as we agitate. You see this yoga ball is full. And to anybody being like, right now my camera's blurry, it's because my camera's cracked. My camera is clapped. That's why, man, it's absolutely clapped. All right? So it's, it's kind of, well, I think it's dirty too. Let me see, wipe it off. <laughs> that made it worse. Yeah, anyway. Oh, this ball is full. You see that, mate? My balls are full. You want to see something cool? Look at this. Plastic. Yo, look. Let's see. Let me get me a light, right? Let me get me a light. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. A little crunch. That's enough. Alright, All right, now. Let's agitate it. I, why was I squishing it like that? I was trying to put the fire out. <laughs> you see, it's agitating right now. You see it? See it moving? Let's speed it up a little bit. I love DC motors, dude. I love DC motors. I love that you can put them in reverse, put them forward, change the speed. If I could go back in time... I would make my plastic shredder out of one of these because it is so annoying to have to re reverse the wiring on my plastic shredder every time it gets clogged. Yeah, so we, we had it go in reverse for a little bit, now it's going forward. Do you think I could make the, you think I could take the greenhouse gases and make it into fuel for like Mark 7? What greenhouse gases? What does that mean? I'm in a greenhouse right now. Oh, you guys, we have more people in here now. Look, guys, I, I increased the holding tank. Look at this. This is the new holding tank. We used to have this fire extinguisher. Now it's this big-ass pipe now. I wonder if we have any oil. Let's see. I'm going to open it up. We may have nothing. YouTube, shut up. YouTube is telling me to rotate the device. I'm trying to show you guys if I have freaking oil in here. Goodness gracious, YouTube. I'm just, shut up. All right, let's see. Let's see. Oh, you can't even blow, you see. I take my phone out. All right. Here we are. Let's see. We got some oil. Oh. Um. No, we don't. <laughs> Just vapor came out. That was embarrassing. And look. I put another live condenser on here. So this has two condensers now. So I'm surprised we don't have oil. Or it, maybe we do and it just hasn't like built up enough in there since this is such a larger capacity uh, let, me, let me catch up on these comments now because I'm going to be overrun I'm already overrun oh my goodness this lighting is trash it's like a lucky silhouette alright there we are not bad for all the camera adjustments. Yeah, I know, right? AC motors are so... But they're, they're, they're powerful, though. They're powerful. Are you programming one of those... Are you using one of those programmable VLDCs? Now, I just have a simple controller that goes back, forward, speed controller as well. Turns AC into, into DC. My bad. More tank for the oil. If I was a tent, 
If I was in that tent, I would make an explosion on your face. What the f <laughs> What is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> hey, you know what, mate? You know what, Sanjay? If you were in this, if you were in this tent right now, you see this? This ball would be down in your throat. And so would mine. So would my balls too. You would have three balls down your throat if you were in this tent. Three balls. How does that, how does that make you feel? Yeah, the oil has to move to get to the tank. Yeah, you're right. It's my first time using that new that new tank, so who knows? It may not even be working. I guess we'll have to see. I know what he will use that slippy oil for. Yeah, exactly. Freaking weirdo. <laughs> I'm using this freaking pyrolysis oil I got in here as lube, you weirdo. <laughs> if I had $20 million, could I start my first plant? Absolutely. Absolutely, I could start my own plant if I had $20 million. Um... In fact, I don't even need that much. Because, I mean, the truth of the matter is I'm not trying to make a huge plant. For the first one, especially. I guess, no, you know what? Because you, you, you have to get all those leases. You have to get all those patents. You have to get all those um, legal things. That is a lot of time, especially. Because you, you know what? For all that legal stuff, it could take years. You know, you could have all the money in the world and it still takes like two, three years. Turn that stuff into petroleum jelly. I mean, it's, it's all the same stuff, honestly. It all is. It, it's all the same stuff that we're making here. Um, in fact, there's a way to take the oil that you get from this and turn it back into plastic. There's a way to do that. Can you use the oil for like a lawnmower? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, if we put it in a weed whacker, right? So, could you use pollution gases to get oil? Like CO2 or methane? I mean... You could, there's already a way to convert methane into oil, into uh, methanol, I believe, and then for CO2, I mean, I, I mean, like, I guess you could somehow convert that into carbon monoxide, but it's non-reactive or anything, so. Could you possibly do a video, you just take a normal garbage bag from your house and throw it in there? Oh, the issue with just that is I have to chop up the stuff because a whole garbage bag can't fit in here at one time. I wanted to do that, but like, I can't, it's not big enough. How fast would you, would you, what? What are you even saying, mate? Sanjay, can we collab? No. Yeah, I would definitely probably build this in another country first, you know? I mean, worse coming to worse. If we had a huge plant in another country where everything's quicker and easier to build, cheaper, we could import the trash from places like the U.S. and so we could have one built here, right? Why don't I throw the reactor from the large door? Because those blades in there get in the way, and it'll be kind of hard, like, to get it in the back of the reactor. Like, even if I spin the blades backwards, they wouldn't really, like, it really won't work, like, you know? Could you make the paper... Could you make a, a powerful paper shredder to shred the plastic? Uh, those motors in those paper shredders are just kind of wussy, honestly. I mean, I have this big air compressor motor running off a of 120. It's not running off a of 220, but it, if it was, it would be better. But even it gets clogged easily. So a paper shredder ain't doing nothing for the type of plastic I have to shred. Come to Pakistan and build it. Free real estate. <laughs> okay. All right, Sandra. You're not even from Pakistan. You say come to Pakistan. You have a UK flag as your picture. Belen. Bubble clot. You're not even from Pakistan. <laughs> How much would you say the cost is to make a reactor? Like this reactor. This one costs definitely around four to five thousand. But that was because, just like with all these things, prototypes. I'm not that good. I mess up. I have to. Buy a lot of things over to keep doing it or like experiments, blah, blah, blah. And that's on top of a lot of this stuff was not even new. Like this was scrap parts. If you were to buy everything new, it definitely would cost like $5,000. But that's huge. That's huge because a washing machine costs 5000 
Come on now. Five grand. Have I tried to use a generator? Trust me, if I if I do something like use a generator, you guys are gonna see it. It's gonna be a video. I have not yet done. Big up UK. <laughs> yeah. I'm not excited like you. For you bank versus Ben. I mean, I'm I'm mean, like I'm I'm gonna watch it. I wouldn't say I'm really excited. I mean, it's just it is what it is, right? What did you post in here, Wayne? I just see a YouTube symbol. In it, UK MMA is getting big too, yeah. It is, in it? Karate is gay. <laughs> uh, this, this man, Sanjay, he's saying karate is gay because I'm a black belt in karate. That's all it is. It's banter. I'm trying to take that from me. You're staying up watching this. It's 12 a.m. I appreciate you here. I appreciate you here, mate. I, I want to go live every Saturday. Because this is, a, this is a part of me having a more balanced life. Because I'm not doing work right now. I'm just chilling. Talking to you guys. What you mean karate's gay is fun? What you mean, Salvation State? Are you kidding me? I want both of your asses. The little MMA crap. You can't take a roundhouse kick to the face, can you? A spinning side kick to the ribs, you bellends. The reactor run on the oil and compress gas it makes. It, do, it does not produce that much oil. Um, the oil is the lowest yield. And I'm doing everything I can, doing the research to make to fix that, bring the oil yield up higher and higher. But right now... The oil yield is the lowest percentage of everything we get in terms of energy content. Yeah, this distiller is going to be good, mate. PP, as your name is. You know, just have a plastic called PP, polypropylene. In fact, all the research papers say polypropylene give us the best oil yield. So PP, let me put your PP in my reactor so we can get oil out of it. How's that sound? You're going to need Detroit survival training if someone pulls out a gun. Well, I mean, there's different types of karate, I'm sure, but the karate I learned, we did the, the, sub, the, the type of self-defense for that type of stuff, for guns, for knives, for all that type of stuff, right? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really, it's more in the mind than anything. And that's what my karate trains me. The best way to win a fight is to never be in the fight. Be observant of your situation where you go. Know what's going on around you. Never get in a situation where you where you um where you have a gun pulled on you. I mean, I'm a black belt in karate. I've been a black belt in karate for almost six years. I've never been in one fight in my life. You know why? Because it's all in my mind. I never put myself in a situation where I'm getting in fights. Because even if you win a fight, you're still getting hurt. So the best way to win is never to get in one. Real talk. But if I ever need to, I got it. I'll kick somebody's ass. Perhaps the oil is sticking to the walls of the reactor. You know what it probably is? I only have two magnetrons on because one of my magnetrons broke. So that's a lot less heat in the reactor, meaning a lot more of the oils are probably condensing inside of it, refluxing inside and not making it all the way to the oil drum. Sucks. But that's what it is. I don't have a third magnetron because I broke my, all of my spare magnetrons trying to make some water-cooled crap with them. Pissed me off. Goodness gracious. You say everyday life in South Africa, you're in that situation. So, I mean, what type of self-defense training did you learn in Salvation State? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, though, PP. Eventually, it will reach up the temp The temperature will build up enough to where the plastic will go, go where, or the oil will go where it needs to go. You know what I'm saying? It's just that right now, since I only have two magnetrons on, it's gonna take longer to heat up. What's up, Tate? What's up, Andrew Tate Miller? <laughs> uh, Mulliner. My boy. That's my boy here. My boy just joined. Tate. How is the energy produced through gas and oil compared to electricity? It runs, it takes to run. Well, we did some math. To run this on average, it takes about 25 kilowatt hours. 
between all the products together, the gas, the oil, and the carbon, to, you know, depending on how much plastic we can put in there. Assume we're putting in the maximum amount, you're getting around almost 50 kilowatt hours out, so sounds good to me. And if my math is wrong, we might be getting 40, we may be getting 30 kilowatt hours out, but regardless, we're getting more energy out we put in regardless. It's a win. It is a win. said karate doesn't use grappling well I'm, I'm never gonna get on the ground with you I'm not I'm never gonna be doing a little little salsa on the ground with you man you know what I'm saying you got to get somebody on the ground first I mean you run up to me trying to trying to do that little that little MMA tackle thing again that front kick right to the face right to your nose your bell ends you're dropping to the ground let's see how your grappling works when you're when you're on the ground knocked out I'm teabagging you. <laughs> yeah, I love you too, mate. Next, you're gonna make a nuclear fusion reactor. Actually, I kind of think those are kind of stupid. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I'm just playing. They're not stupid, of course. It's science. Um, but I, I just feel like, why can't we just use nuclear, nuclear, the, the regular nuclear reactors, nuclear fission reactors? Like, what's so wrong with those, honestly? saying they're always gonna blow up or some crap this is gonna blow up come on now no it's not gonna blow up but I'm just saying like we already have the technology to have nuclear energy around the whole world right you know what I'm saying we don't even need nuclear fusion but what but but people are so scared of nuclear this nuclear that you know the only thing I don't like about nuclear energy no matter what it is is it always has to be owned by the, the government or something you know what I'm saying? Like nuclear energy. I'm trying to get this angle right. Because the sun is starting to come down, make me look like a silhouette. The biggest issue with nuclear energy is that you can never have it off grid. You can never have it at a consumer scale. It always has to be big and industrial, right? So it's not good for for human like for um independent, energy independence, but it's good for societal energy. Uh, meeting the societal energy needs, you understand me, right? Like, a nuclear reactor can power a whole city, but you could never have a nuclear reactor just in your backyard, just to power your house, if you ever want that. You could have this, you could have solar panels, you could have wind to do that for you, right? So you could have true independence. All right, see you, Sanjay. Peace out, mate. Big ass efficiency, maybe. What you are behind no, what that the engine right here is this is a diesel engine. I was trying to run my pyrolysis diesel off of it a while ago. Then I realized that those um hand cranked diesel engines are impossible to start by hand. So I gotta like figure out another way to start it. But I tried to do that little thing that um Project Farm does where he starts it with a, a drill and I almost snapped my wrist. So I, it just got to a point where I'm like, I don't know how to start the thing. Um I wanted to see if my diesel would work in a diesel engine because I don't have a diesel car. But it came down to a point. I know a G. He has a diesel car, a diesel Volkswagen. Once I get a gallon of diesel for my reactor, we're gonna put it in his car and we're gonna run it. And it's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? And he's trying like sometimes he's like, uh, what if it doesn't work? Where my car? But I said, shut up. It's gonna work. Cause I put it in my weed whacker, it works. I put raw star from oil in my weed whacker, it works. So if you're if you can run a diesel car for freaking French fry oil, it's gonna work off my goddamn plastic fuel. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna work. The only reactor we have is run by some French workers because they don't teach nuclear engineering. Oh, interesting. See, that's the type of thing. It does have a rope start. What I'm telling you is the rope start is impossible. Like, I literally, like, my freaking forearm was tired. Like, I was jacking off for th 30 hours trying to just start this dang thing because, it, it, like, you just keep pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and it never freaking starts. You know what I'm saying? Nuclear fission reactors could easily replace fossil fuels for way longer than we need to make alternate. Exactly. So it's clearly some. It's clearly something done while we're not using it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, say it's the fear of people or whatever. But personally, to me, I don't know what it is. But nuclear fission that should have been. It should have been. I mean, as soon as we found out that technology could work, that should have been it. You know what I'm saying? That should have been it. I don't get it. 
talking about yeah, we're talking about energy density. Nuclear energy density is like on a whole nother level. So you thought a pound of plastic had a lot of energy? Talk about a pound of uranium. What is it? Uranium two thirty five. Come on now. Whole nother level of energy density there. We're not using it. Just like this stuff. Talk about we have pollution issues, waste issues. Turn it into fuel. Why are we not doing it? You know, some things I just don't know. I just don't know why we why, why it's like some type of like people are cock blocking themselves. People are cucking themselves. Just do it. Let's do it. Why are we not doing pyrolysis yet? When we have we have forever chemicals. We have Teflon pans that that never degrade. But you put them in here, they degrade. The PFAS forever chemicals. They all go in here. They, it all breaks down. You know. Do you believe at some point down the road we will all go electric as society? No, we're never going to be all electric. Tell me when an airplane can run off of batteries, when a dump truck can run off of batteries, when boats can run off of batteries. No, I'm sorry. There's some things that you can't do with electricity. Think about it like this combustible fuels, combustive. Energy, that's like the basis, the basic energy, the foundation, like that's like nature's energy. Your body is like, your body like oxidizes the food you eat. So to, uh, the oxidative reaction is bound to our nature. We will forever be using some type of combustion, some type of oxidative process to create electricity, to create energy. Right? We're never going to be all electricity. That's just not how it works. I'm just being honest, you know? People be optimistic. I'm just saying that how it is. So start a diesel engine on French fry oil. You need to start an engine on diesel instead of the oil. So maybe you need to start... Yeah, you're right. I, just, I should actually try some real diesel in there. I never see why I say it, but you check if the fuel inlet is on, um, I guess. I'll, I'll return to that diesel engine when I actually have, when I'm actually making diesel look good. Because my, my distill, I haven't distilled something in, in forever, man. What's up, Nino? Nino Rata, king of spam. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. I see some new people in here today. I've never seen PP before. I've never seen Nino. Good to see uh, new people in the live stream. Saucers are all electric. Nikola and Tes Nikola Tesla into the saucer. Yeah, I hear about that too, yeah. But like you know what I'm saying? I believe that we could make majority of our things electric, but to say everything will be electric, that's just not that's, that's unrealistic. Because at the end of the day, we're always gonna have food waste, we're always gonna have trash, and we're gonna turn that trash into fuel because the technology right here that I've been working so diligently on is going to work and it's going to be at an industrial scale worldwide, international. So, we're talking in the future, there's going to be pyrolysis reactors, microwave pyrolysis reactors everywhere. So we're going to have renewable and clean, combustible energy everywhere. And we'll also have renewable, clean electricity everywhere. So we'll be a hybrid society where everything is clean and renewable. And we have both sides. So if you want a car that runs off of gasoline, we can make you some good gasoline from trash, or if you want a Tesla, we can make you a Tesla from clean electricity. You have the choice, you know? What's up, Jason? V, V Bezies, Jason, I don't know how to pronounce your name, honestly. What breaks in the Magnetrons? I thought they were reliable. Well, the Magnetron broke because I dropped it. Like a, like a, like a baby, right? I dropped it like a, like a little nun. So it's my fault, real talk. Um, that, that's why I broke. In fact, it's rare they break. You know, it's rare. For me, at least. Because I have the fans that blow them. So the, my fans give them such a good blow job that they just don't get, they don't die. You know? I, I run them for hundreds of hours. They're fine. It's just when, I, when you drop it in the freaking ground, of course, it's going to be a little bit weird. I mean, I dropped it on the ground and it worked for like one more day. And then I wanted to run it today. It didn't work. Say, so watch out for the radioactive dust. The beryllium oxide, it's not even radioactive. People really be scared of that. 
I don't know why. Cause they're like, if you break it, you you breathe it in, you're not you're gonna get cancer. Well, look, if I break it and I see dust, I'm just walking out the way. I'm just gonna get out the way. I'm just gonna walk away. I'm not gonna just sit there and breathe it in. It's like when the reactor leaks, right? When the reactor leaks, I'm not just over there breathing in all that crap. I just walk away. Is paralysis profitable? Yes. You get more energy in than you get more energy out than you put in. And you get products like metals, precious metals out. It's profitable. Period. Period. So don't ask anymore, Abdul, because I just told you. It is profitable. The good thing about this reactor is, is that they will practically never run out of plastic consume. If there's plastic in my blood, then there will always be plastic. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Real talk, real talk. Yo, Abdul, don't ask again, bro, because I just told you. Alright? Yeah, if, if you ask again, man, I'm going to have to stop you from asking, alright? No talk. I ain't trying to be tyrannical, but you're kind of pissing off everybody. Because, I mean, everybody here already knows the, the bloody answer. You're just telling me, like, is it profitable? Is it profitable? Yes, it's profitable, okay? Yes. Yes. You're right, but if there's, pla there's plastic in our blood, and, you know, the plastic production is never going to stop because, you know, Plastic is made of crude oil. Let's say everybody uses Teslas. Teslas are made of plastic. What more can I say? What more can I say? So, the batteries are made of plastic. Uh, what else? <laughs> Come on now. And we're never going to stop plastic consumption. Never. I promise that. Plastic consumption will always be at a, either a fixed rate or will always be going up because the bigger society gets, the more useful plastic is. And... It's a really useful material, so I don't blame them. What's your opinion on biofuel from palm oil? I think it's great. I think, why are we throwing away oil? That's stupid. Why are we throwing away oil? Why are we throwing away plastic? Why are we throwing away food waste? Any trash that has energy in it, which is all trash, except for inorganic stuff, but that can always be melted down and reused or, or whatever. Any trash that, can, that is organic and, and can be made into fuel should be. It's period. Especially... Rich things like oils. Come on now. I don't know why it's even a thing to throw away oils. Is mercury contamination a risk for e-waste? I mean, like, not in the vapors. Mercury would be in the solid residue. You know, some people, when I made the e-waste video, they're like, Bro, you're gonna get freaking cancer from breathing it. There's not gonna be freaking heavy metals floating in the dust, dude. I mean, not in the dust, but I'm in the vapors. From pyrolysis. Especially after all those filters. Now, maybe in the dust, yes. Maybe in the carbon, yes. But, you know, it's heavy. Literally, the name is heavy metals. It's dense. It sinks to the bottom. So, you know, like, I'm not... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's, it's fit. I, I know where it is. It's right there. Like, you feel me? It's not a, I'm not scared of mercury in it because I'm not breathing the crap in. I'm not drinking water from the crap. It's, I, I'm aware of what it is, what it's doing. Well, if I see a leak somewhere, hold up. Yeah, I had to end up turning the reactor off because the, um, the water cooling line was leaking water inside of the electronics box. God damn it. I hate when that happens. One second. Let me see where it's leaking. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what happened, right? But I got my transformers cooled by oil. And then that oil is cooled by water. There's like a copper coil.
that's in the water, in the oil, and somehow it leaked or something, but there's oil that leaked, that's leaking out of the, tra the transformer box, and then all of the water that's at my 55-gallon drum that supplies the water is all empty. Like, I don't know what the heck even happened. That has never happened before. Goodness gracious. I knew some stuff would go wrong. It was too good to be true. Well, I gotta check whatever happened, but it was a good live stream with you guys. Thank you all for stopping by. You guys have a great day.